What's up, Sunday fam? Welcome back to another video. I'm Element. I'm Flip. And we are watching Sundays where we cover every Asian entertainment, K-pop, K-drama, everything out there on all days but Sunday. But today, we're talking about Squid Game. Squid Games. So Squid Games is another take or pays homage to the survival horror tropes or survival game tropes such as Alice in Borderland, which we loved most recently, but reminds us a lot of Hunger Games or even Battle Royale. Ooh, yeah. This new installment is... I would say in kind of like it's 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 newish, but it still kind of pokes at the same tropes when it comes to survival games. I'd say the unique part about Squid Game is that it's all about your childhood games, right? It's mm. not about like being in an arena and fighting everyone else or using your strength or your cunning or skills to kill everyone else. A lot of these uh, games are just simple little games. One of the games includes marbles, so that gives us an idea of what it's all about. But this comes to us by way of a Korean drama, which we all know is going to have a really unique and brutal take to this genre. It's a very tragic tale and it's around a bunch of hopeless and useless, not useless. Just <laughs> so social outcasts and it centers around gi -hun, who is a deadbeat father who has a fractured relationship with his daughter. He is troubled with a lot of debt. He has a huge problem with managing his money and so he meets a guy mm -hmm. who, which is a special appearance by Gong Yu from Train to Busan. He challenges him to a game of Dakji where you have to flip the paper and instead of betting money, he, he can win money, but instead of betting money, he, uh, you know, he gets slapped in the face. Uh, and so this leads him to this organization holding Squid Game, where all of the contestants are pretty much like deadbeats or social outcasts who have a lot of debt riding on their heads. And so what they don't know at the outset though, is that they are signing away their lives because in the first game, red light, green light, mm -hmm. you know, you think this is a simple game, there's gonna be winners and losers, but the losers who actually, you know, get caught by the robot mm -hmm. gets shot. So everyone's dying. I mean, come on, you have to have made the guess, right? You're in this warehouse or facility, somewhere in the middle of nowhere in an island. They're all dressed in like these red hoodies with squares, circles, and triangles on their masks. And yes. you don't see their faces. Some of them are carrying guns and it's kind of just like, where am I? And what am I about <laughs> to get myself into? And so the first game was red light, green light. And that's when the massacre starts. And then we get to the second game, Sugar Honeycomb, which happens to involve people trying to melt or trying to cut out um, hardened sugar mm -hmm. and cut out a shape without breaking the original one. Oh, and that was difficult. We had some people cheating with like, you know, heating up a needle mm -hmm. to cut through. And then Gihun surprisingly came up with the most innovative idea, which was to lick it from the back because the, the sugar was thinnest where it was cut. This is where we start to see the shenanigans of his friend, mm -hmm. Sang Woo, who is a graduate of SNU or like Korea's Harvard. He starts to show his conniving ways and yeah. his scheming ways. He lies about knowing what the game is about and he starts to show he's in it for himself. Exactly. Like even though you're childhood friends or even though you know somebody or you think you know somebody, yeah. when it comes to a survival game, when it comes to choosing your life or your friends, man, I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. I don't know. Leave your comments in the section below. What would you do if it was a childhood friend of yours and you were put in the same situation? What would you choose? I think I would probably choose myself. If it was between me and you, I'd probably choose myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then in between these games, of course, they had these like knights, these like massacre knights. And then this knight forces them to create their own team with each other. Of course, Gihun and Sang Woo form mm -hmm. uh, a partnership because they're friends. And then they recruit the old man, player one, Il Nam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Pakistani, Ali Abdul. The North Korean defector, Kang Se Byuk. Fast forward to the game, Il Nam, the old man, player one, is the most knowledgeable on tug of war and causes them to win based on rhythm, based on the positioning of everybody. This was a great game. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, Il Nam was just like, would you pick the old man? Because there's a lot of naivete happening here because like you have feelings and emotions, you've been partners with, you formed a team with the old man. I mean, come on, like you're leaving yeah. him behind just because we've got to form a stronger group with just men with muscles. But like what they don't know is that he knows the strategy of pulling the win into this tug of war game, which is really 
really interesting because I've never seen that before. Uh, maybe they Matrix made it up. Matrix pose. Maybe, yeah, it was a Matrix pose and then they were really tactile. You know, Sang Wu was very, like, very, like, strategic at the very pivotal moment where they're about to lose. <laughs> But what's even more interesting to me is that Il Nam is somebody that you would think is the weakest link out of yeah. all of these games, right? Even in red light, green light, he looked like he was having a hell of a lot of good time because, you know, his time is almost up and so he might as well enjoy the shit out of it, right? Yes, absolutely. But like, you know, you pick a woman and then you pick another woman, it's almost kind of like you're picking out of emotions without thinking straight about what the strategy is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, good thing that they made it through. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes the next game even more tragic because oh, they man. have all of these friendships and partnerships they formed throughout their teaming up in the previous games. They come to the marble game, mm. Ganbu, where they have to pair up with someone. And of course, everyone forms up pairs based on how they how well they work together. Lo and behold, oh. the game is all about eliminating your partner. And we have a person who, ha who went in there with his wife, eliminated oh. his wife, and Gihan had to pair up with Il Nam, the old man, and this was very, very tragic because like, you know, we, we start, as we're watching their relationship, it's growing, mm -hmm. and then we see that he's devolving into like a dementia state and losing his memory. You have to see that Gihan is tricking him. Yeah. This was so tragic. It was very tragic, and this is kind of where the game or where the drama reminded me a lot of Lord of Flies or even Battle Royale, right? Like, you have these teams or you have these bonds with people that you're just surviving with. And then this game, like, I don't know if I've seen anything very similar to this, but I'm sure Lord of Flies will teach you that lesson. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're closest to this person in in this instance, one of you is gonna go, yeah. right? But in this instance, it's, you know, El Nam is suffering some sort of dementia. He's uh, he's being tricked and fooled by Gihon. He's like, you know, that's not what I said. I didn't say odd, I, d I said even. So it ends up winning all of the marbles. And in the end, what seems like, what seems <laughs> like El Nam was put to the death. But what's even more Can messed up for me was Sangwoo and Ali. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, Ali was just like, well, I mean, first of all, well, before that, why, 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 why did you fall for it? <laughs> I knew, I knew that Sangwoo was playing him from the from the get go because I was like, this, there's no way, like he's 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 doing his <sighs> best to explain how he can break the rules, but the rules are pretty clear. You have to play with your partner. So yeah, how did you fall for that, Ali? First of all, and like Sangwoo, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> And so we finally get to the penultimate game, which is the Stepping Stone Glass game. Ooh. And this was tricky as balls. Yep. And in this game, it's all about crossing a bridge of glass panels that one is tempered and one is regular glass. Mm. And so you have to pick which one and choose and cross. <laughs> and this game sees finally the death of Duk-Su, Duk -Su, yes. who is the gangster who is just like skating through oh or, or surfing through the games just based on his will being more overwhelming than others. And of course, this saw the death of Minyo, who gave her love to duk -Su for some reason, uh, I guess to curry some favor with him. But mm -hmm. in the end, she was betrayed and duk -Su wasn't that type of guy to not betray. <laughs> He's going to betray. And so she grabbed him and dragged him off of the edge and that saw the death. I was so happy at that moment. But still, this game presented a huge problem because telling the difference between tempered glass and regular glass, there is a trick. And I have that trick, so stay tuned for that video on how to beat Stepping Stone Glass Game. Moving on, the winners of this game going on to the finals was Sangwoo, Gion, and Kang Sebyuk, which was very tragic again because mm. Sebyuk was injured by the exploding glass and that led she to- She was one of my favorite characters. She was! Yeah. And this led to her being injured in one of those intermediary kind of violent nights. Mm -hmm. they, they end up eating like a delicious meal. It looked like T-bone steak and it looked really, really good. Some ASMR moments. Oh, yeah. I mean, they deserved it. But Sibyuk was, I think, tragically on her way out anyways. But the way she went down, 
Sang Woo, man. Like yeah, he, the I one guy, the, hit, the hatred level for Sang Woo just kept <laughs> rising and rising up until that moment. It was inevitable for Sebyuk to, you know, go down. But I had this very small, very small glimmer of hope that Sebyuk would make it. But unfortunately, that's not how the game works. And so that yeah. hatred level just went so it comes down to the final squid game mm -hmm. with Sangwoo and Gion and they play it as they did as children and uh, Gion has the upper hand because he's got this overwhelming anger in him mm -hmm. this this sort of retribution that needs to be uh, delivered and he chooses not to kill Sangwoo. I mean what I thought was amazing was that he he finally started to do something that's not in his character even though he's kind of like a deadbeat dad and he has his down on his luck he chose to cheat a little bit here because there really aren't any rules grab some sand while he was yeah. pretending to tie his shoes or he wasn't pretending he was tying his shoes grab some sand gained the upper hand and ultimately had all of this scuffling and going back and forth they had the knife he gets stabbed and they wrestling on the ground they're choking each other out yeah. and then in the end Sangwoo decides to become a saint. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, does not mean that the not, hatred level went down. No, from there. no, no. You will find no pity from me. Mm -hmm. And so Gihun ends up winning the game, but he finds himself in a rut for over a year. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's got 45 million USD or 45 billion won in his bank account. He's not touching mm -hmm. it. And finally, he gets contacted. He, he gets the semi PlayStation card again. Mm -hmm. And it's from his Ganbu. Yes. And that was when everything just. I mean, yeah, I, I, I actually called it because mm. in the in the episode where they showed the gray hair in the in the mask and mm. the front man talking to him was like, that looks like El Nam. And oh, a um, special shout out to the front man who happens to be in Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he, he meets him and he, he finds out the, the purpose of these games. Him and his richest friends got together. They decided they weren't having fun anymore. Yep. They had too much money to spend. I don't know. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> if I have too much money to spend, I'm going to spend it. I think I'd be really happy. <laughs> yes. But uh, besides, besides the point, like he, they get together and they devise the squid game just so they can have fun. And then after a while, Il Nam decides it's no longer fun to watch, so he, he so he decides to compete in this one. Their reason is because they had way too much money and they stopped having fun, so they decided to make this really <laughs> crazy game that is just like testing the the strength of humanity and murdering people <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I guess the the larger lesson here is that, and he said it himself, like whether you're rich or you're poor, your life is still gonna suck. But in the end, he decides to play one final game so that he rides off in to the sunset doing what he loves to do. Finally, we get to the end with Gihun, who is finally taking some <sighs> action with the money that he was given. He, he gives some mm -hmm. to Sangwoo's mother, mm -hmm. uh, tells her to take care of Sebyuk's younger brother, mm -hmm. and then he's on his way mm -hmm. to finally make amends Yay! with his daughter, Yay! going to Los Angeles. Taking some responsibility. And Woo! then he sees the guy from Train to Busan again, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no, <laughs> no, no, this is wrong. <laughs> I was like, what the f He's about to get on the plane and he get oh he calls in gosh. and then the front man is like, don't do this for your own good. Just get on the plane mm -hmm. and reunite with your daughter. And he turns around like, this is why I called yeah. Gihun as a douche. This because is time. <laughs> if, if there's any time to just let go and go and like fix your life, do it. I don't know. Um, I don't know what he's thinking by going back into the I know the what he was game. thinking. I know exactly what he was thinking. He's, it's... What? It's time for season two. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's think about why he would go back in and what that means for Huang In Ho, which mm -hmm. is the police officer's brother mm -hmm. who happens to be the front man. Mm -hmm. This goes into my theory as to how you become the front man. And I think, you know, you're right. It is for season two. Yep. He's going back in to play again and he's going to compete and he's most likely going to win again. And I think this is the narrative that's going to keep going until Gihun finally you know, in his pursuit to get rid of these games, become mm -hmm. the front man. Oh, you think he's gonna end the game? Yeah, because uh, the police officer's brother was one of the winners of mm -hmm. the previous Squid Game, yeah. and now he's the front man. So I'm assuming, or I'm at least inferring, if you 
you win multiple times, mm. you can become the front man. And so with Gihun wanting to stop these games at least, and like mm. that's why he's going back in, maybe he's looking to become the front man and or, or maybe change things, Ooh. change the games. That is interesting. Well, let us know what you think in the comment section below. What is in store for us for season two? Do you think Gihun is going to change the games or do you think the cycle of evil is going to continue? I think it's going to continue. I think it's going to continue. Yeah, I think you it's know, going to continue. Th there, things are going to happen where they're, where he's going to be like, it's time for season three. So <laughs> that'll do it for our video on Squid Game. If you enjoyed our video, please leave a like and subscribe, especially if you're new to the channel and hit the bell notification. Also stay tuned for the other video that we're going to do, how to beat the Stepping Stone Glass game. Mm. I have a perfect solution for it. So stay tuned for that. But as always, we'll see you next time.